Hey, and welcome to this final part in the tutorial series where we're going to texture the shield in Substance Painter. Before we go ahead and hop over to Substance Painter, we just need to smooth the shield, as at the moment we just have a smooth preview. In Maya, hitting free for smooth preview doesn't modify or smooth the original mesh, hence being called a preview. So what we can actually do is just convert the smooth preview to polygons. We can do this by going to modify, convert, smooth preview to polygons. It shouldn't take too long, and now we can just export this as an OBJ. So what you're going to want to do is just go to File, Export Selection, and just save it as an OBJ. I'm just going to put it to my desktop. Just a quick side note, if you can't select OBJ from the drop-down, you might just need to enable it. To do so, go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and go to your Plugin Manager. Search for OBJ and then tick those boxes. Click Auto Load so Maya just loads it on Startup. Alright cool, so we've now exported the model, what I'm just going to do now is just undo until before I converted the mesh, just so I go back to the smooth preview. Alright, so that's what we need to do inside of Maya, so let's just go ahead and open up Substance Painter. Okay, so now we're in Substance Painter, so creating a new project by going to File, New. Also, just so you know, this isn't particularly going to be a beginner tutorial, although what I do in this tutorial should be easy enough to follow along to and we'll sort of show you my workflow and approach to texture inside of Substance Painter. So what we're just going to want to do is set the template to PBR Metallic Roughness and then just select the OBJ that we exported from inside Maya. I'm just going to work in 2K, bearing in mind this can be changed at any time. Okay, just a quick side note in case you didn't know, all the camera movement is the same as inside of Maya. The first thing you're going to want to do is bake the texture maps. This is going to allow the smart materials to work, as the software will have all the information like normal, occlusion, and curvature maps, for example. So what you're going to want to do is go over to the texture set settings and click the bake mesh map button down here. What I'm going to do is just change it to uh, 2048, so like 2K, to match my project, and then just click the button down here to bake the mesh maps. Just let it do its thing, shouldn't take too long. And that's the boring bit done, now time for the texturing. Right, so I always sort of get rid of the layer 1 that's there by default and start completely fresh. So I'm just going to delete it by hitting delete on the keyboard. Okay, so what you can do in Substance Painter is just throw a bunch of smart materials on and you'll get a result which looks good. But if you want something a little bit more custom, then it's good to build up the layers with generator masks and such. I'll be showing you how to do this and hopefully you'll get an idea of my texturing workflow. Let's start building up the base materials, so let's start by adding the wood material to the planks. Search for wood, and I'm probably just going to use this wood rough material here. If like mine your grain is going the wrong direction, just adjust the UV rotation. By the way, you can get up this menu by right clicking. Then just rotate it by 90 degrees. Obviously we don't want wood everywhere. So I'm just going to add a black mask by right clicking the layer and going to add black mask. This has clearly got rid of everything which we don't necessarily want, but what we can actually do is paint in white by using the polyfill tool. So by pressing 4 on the keyboard to change the polyfill tool, right click for the menu and change it to mesh fill and set it to 1 aka white. Now using this tool we can click on the planks to fill those object UVs with white and therefore letting the wood show through. Sometimes you might need to click multiple times for the first time, I don't know why. Ok cool, so now we have the wood working, let's just add some iron to the metal parts of the shield. So I'm just going to search for iron, and I'm probably just going to use this iron old, so just drag it out onto the shield like we did with the wood. Ok, so instead of using a black mask like we did on the wood, let's use a white mask, um, as it's going to be easier to deselect the planks than select all the rivets. Like we did before, press 4 on the keyboard to change the polyfill tool, however, instead of using white, we can use black, so set it to 0. Now what we can do is click on the planks to fill those objects with black, and therefore removing the iron from them. Ok great, so not looking too shabby. This is probably as far as I'm going to go with the basic layer of materials, and I'll start adding detail into the shield with paint, and maybe even a little blood. So I mean we could make a paint layer, and just set up how we want the paint to look, and then just paint on the shield like so. However this doesn't really give us much editability moving forwards, as whatever we paint is kind of set in stone. The way I prefer to work is to make a fill layer, and then just use a mask to paint and erase it. This way we can always make changes to the fill layer moving forwards and whatever we painted still remains the same. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Click the pink bucket with the plus symbol to do so. Okay, so now everything is now white, but notice how we still get the height and normal map information coming through. This is why it's worth putting base materials down even if you're not going to see them much. It just adds that extra level of detail and realism. To save ourselves having to do repetitive tasks, we're going to use a folder to contain all the paint layers. This is going to make detailing them so much easier as when we add generators to the folder, it's going to apply to everything inside. To do this, click the little folder icon and drag the new fill layer into it. Okay, right, so let's just add the iron old layer to the top. I'm just going to rename this folder paint. In the fill layer menu, which you can get to by right clicking in the viewport, I'm just going to turn off all the material channels we don't need. Play around with the colour and roughness until you have a look you want. Probably something like that. And that works quite well. I'm going to be making a white and red shield, so I'm just going to duplicate this layer, so Control D. And just choose a red colour. And then just have a little play around and make any adjustments accordingly. Nice, well at the moment all I have is a red shield, so let's just add a black mask to it so we can paint a pattern. So I'm just going to be making a triangle pattern, so under the alphas in the shelf I'm going to search for triangle. Um, and I'm just going to double click this triangle as I like this one, and that will add it to the alpha of the brush. Now in the brush settings, which you can find by right clicking on the viewport, make sure the grayscale is set to 1, so for white. And I found setting the alignment to camera and size paste to viewport works best for this purpose. So you're going to want to paint from the top view. So what you can actually do, as you rotate the camera, you can use shift and it can snap it. So I'm just going to snap it to the top view like this. And I'm just going to paint out a pattern like this. Using control and the left mouse button and moving the mouse up and down to rotate and control and the right mouse button and moving the mouse left and right to scale it. Yep, something like that works well. Cool, well this is super clean so we're going to want to dirty it up a little bit. And this is where the fun starts to happen. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a black mask to the paint folder. And then just right click it and add a generator. Nothing's going to happen straight away, so what we're going to want to do is right click out in the viewport to bring up the menu and then click on the generator. Click metal edges. I know we're not working with metal, but it's going to give a nice effect. First of all, you're going to want to turn on invert. I'm just going to turn up the wear level and set the grunge scale to 1, as I feel that works best for this model. You can play around with the grunge amount and other settings until you get a look you like. Okay, so this is looking good. A high grunge amount and a little less of the wear level seems to work well for me. Okay, so the beauty of using a fill layer is that we can go in and change the paint now. So I think I'm just going to change my white to black. And because everything is inside a folder, we don't have any extra work to do. All the detail is still coming through. Something else we can do is just add a dirt layer to the whole shield. Create a new fill layer on top of all the other layers and just change the colours to a dark brown and up the roughness a little. Add a black mask and create a new generator. This time, use the dirt generator. This gives a nice effect of the dirt being all down in the little cracks and such. I'm probably going to leave the settings as they are and just increase the level a little. Something like this gives a nice effect. Layers like this don't take much time at all, but make a real difference to the overall look. Right, so I think it's time for some finishing blood. So you've probably guessed it already, but create a new fill layer and make the colour red. Just adjust the roughness a little bit, but it might be best to change all these settings once you've added the blood splatter to the shield and see how it looks overall. Add a black mask and create a new paint layer on it. Again, heading over to the alphas part of the shelf, 
I'm just gonna search for splatters and find one I like. Um, probably this one. And then I'm just gonna double click it and start to paint. Just make sure the gradient is set to one if it isn't already. And then just change your alignment to planar as that's gonna rotate the textures to the normals of the model. Don't worry about going too heavy with this, as we're going to dial it back with a generator in just a minute. Right, so on the black mask, right click and click add a generator. Set the generator to drip and rust. Notice how it adds blood everywhere. We don't want this, so let's just change the mode from normal to multiply. Now it's going to act as a control for where we painted the blood. Just play around with the rust spreading to break up and reduce the blood effect. Something like this works quite well. Now you can always go back in and adjust the blood, making it more wet or dry as you like. It's these extra layers you add which gives an asset character and story, therefore making it feel more real. All that's left to do is to export them. So go to File, Export Textures and choose a location. Set the config to PBR Metallic Rough, and you can choose a resolution. I'm probably going to set this to 4K, as I'm going to be rendering this pretty close up. And then all there is to do is click export. Brilliant. This was pretty basic, but hopefully shows you how I texture and substance painter, and sort of my workflow and approach. That's it for this tutorial, however, I have two more additional videos coming out soon, showing you how to set up the shaders in Maya, one for Arnold, and the other one for Redshift Renderer. So until then, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.